So Ray Hope is coming to talk to us today about the mental edge. Let me give you a background on Ray. He's an Australian champion power lifter. So Ray started powerlifting when he was studying at university. Within three years, he was ranked the best junior lifter in Australia over all weight divisions, and he went on to break Australian junior records for the squat, deadlift, and total in the 60 kilo weight division. He competed at two world junior championships and won the Australian Open Powerlifting Championships before retiring. After nine years in retirement, he started lifting again, and to his surprise, had a rapid comeback in strength and won the Australian Championship in 2009, breaking the record by 2.5 kilos, and then again in 2010, adding another 20 kilos to his record. Now, I think you've sort of got to be relatively mentally sane together. <laughs> Maybe you do that. Well, I don't know. If you want to come prove that, Ray? Please come on, Ray. Thanks, Gary. And who was expecting somebody bigger? Yeah. <laughs> I went to a, a job interview once, and it had on my CV that I was an Australian powerlifting champion. And the first thing they said to me was, we were expecting someone bigger. <laughs> <laughs> now over the years, lots of people have said to me, how can you lift so much weight? And even my brother, after coming along to one comp, he said, I can't comprehend how you can lift 250 kilograms off the ground. Wow. Now, The Slight Edge is a book that's been talked about a lot here. The main point of this book is the amazing changes that can happen with repeated action over a long time. So my journey is an example of that. I didn't start out with some superhuman ability. I was just an average university student. Okay, this was before I discovered powerlifting. <laughs> I had much more hair back then. <laughs> I weighed about 56 kilograms. Okay, this is a video from my last competition the national titles in uh, 2010. Basically, my last competition was a squat of 225 kilograms. I weighed in at 67.3, bench press of 145 kilograms, and deadlift of 255 kilograms. Now, don't worry, I'm not gonna get any of you to try and do that today. And that was, that transformation didn't take 10 days. It was 10 years of continuous training. Well, that might be a bit daunting to a lot of you, but it all started with a very simple decision. I didn't wake up and go, wow, I'd like to do powerlifting. No, I was uh, doing an elective in human movements, and uh, one day a guy came in who was doing his uh, master's degree, and he wanted some volunteers for a strength training program. It was just a 12-week strength training program. And I thought, well, why not? I can just go along, do the training, I'll get free use of the gym, expert coach, why not? So I signed up and did a 12-week program. Now, when I came along to this uh, environment here, I thought I hadn't been doing any exercise for about you know, a year. But what, what can 10 minutes do? You know, I used to train for two hours in the gym, 10 minutes, that's nothing. And then one of the uh, personal trainers got us to stand up and jump up and down for 30 seconds, and rest, and jump up and down for 30 seconds, and I was laughing and puffing, I thought, Okay, maybe there's something to this. <laughs> so I gave it a try, and like that day I felt great. I was like, wow, I'm alive again. And I just kept going. So it was just a very simple decision. So for me, you know, do we want to be health and fit? Healthy and fit? Yeah. Yes or yes. <laughs> okay, preparation. My coach used to have a saying. Proper preparation prevents piss poor performance. <laughs> So today's talk is going to be about preparation, but no, that doesn't mean we're just going to you know, learn a few things. It does actually involve ex action preparation. Now, my inspiration for this talk was, I started coming along here and listening to a lot of the talks, particularly some of Hercules' talks, and listening to some of the CDs and reading the books, and I thought, I haven't been successful in all of the areas of my life, and I didn't quite understand why, in some areas, I've figured out lots of ways not to make a light bulb, Whereas in other areas, I built a lighthouse. And through listening to some of these talks, I realised there were some very simple things that my coach had got me to do at the start that had helped me be successful in those areas where I was, but I just hadn't even considered using them in other areas of my life. Now, who's heard of the importance of the people we associate with? Yeah, lots of you. And I was really lucky that the coach that I had was a really good coach. You know, he was really good at inspiring me, teaching me what I needed to, do, to know, 
keeping me you know, on performance to be the best I could be. Now who thinks, I met my coach, he showed me how to do a few lifts and I went, great, no worries, I can handle it from here and see you later. <laughs> no. I stuck with him for seven years, you know, until I retired. And during those seven years, I trained the whole time at the University Powerlifting Club. Now what I loved about the club was a group of people that were always supporting each other, helping each other, encouraging each other, we trained together a lot. And in that environment helped all of us be a lot better than we could have been on our own. And when I came back from retirement, I'd moved away from university, didn't live anywhere near there, and there was lots of gyms that were nearby that I could have gone to. But I went all the way back to the, the university club because of the people that were there. Now, by that time, the university club had become like a mecca for all the best lifters in, in Queensland. And I thought, you know, if I'm going to do really well, I have to be in that environment. They're all going to support each other and help us. And what I love about this group here is that it's a community of people that we're all helping each other. We're giving our IP, we're giving our time and supporting and encouraging each other. And you know, we're connected to a team of people that are supporting us and you know, helping us be the best we can be with our health. Okay, why are we doing what we're doing and where are we going? Now for me, this is one of the most important steps because if I don't know why I'm doing something, well, I never really end up doing anything. Now Murray touched on some of the reasons people might want to uh, work on their health and fitness. I don't know, what did you guys pick? I've noticed with me that the real reason why I do things is not always as obvious as I thought it might be. Now, I didn't spend all those hours in the gym over 10 years and put up with a lot of quite intense pain at times just because I thought, well, it'd be really cool if I could, you know, lift 255 kilos off the ground. But that wasn't driving me. It wasn't the medals, it wasn't the trophies, it wasn't the record certificates. You know what it was? I was tasting a feeling. And since I was quite young, um, I always wanted to do something that was significant, something that meant something, something that I would be remembered for, that made my life worth living. And to be honest, powerlifting may not have been the best choice. <laughs> To working with Dr. Collius, who you know, luckily you're going to hear from him next. I've uh, you know worked on some ideas that are going to be helpful and more aligned with what my true purpose in life is. And um, but when I was powerlifting, and I was getting constant improvements and things were going really well, and I saw that there was a possibility that I could break a national record and I had my name etched in history, and that triggered something deep inside me that was like it, it drove me. You know, it was just done. I would keep going until it was done. So what's driving you? Gandhi said, our life is our message. We're all doing something with our life and we're all going somewhere. What message is that giving? And hopefully you will love the message that your life is given. I started this year, I sat down and I looked at my life honestly. There was a few areas that I really wasn't very happy with. And so I decided there was you know, time for some changes. Now I really believe whatever it is you want to do with your life, you're going to be better at it, more efficient at it, more capable of dealing with the challenges that come up if we're fit and healthy. Who said that uh, what gets measured improves? Now the very first thing that my coach did was work out how much I could squat, how much I could bench press and how much I could deadlift. And every single training session, we wrote down exactly where I lifted. Every competition was basically measuring where I was at so I knew what I had to do to get where I wanted to go. When I started doing the Health Made Easy, easy exercise program, the first thing I did was see how many squats I could do, see how many push-ups I could do, see how many chin-ups I could do, see how many leg raises I could do, basically so I knew exactly where I was at and I could set goals. I was first introduced to goal setting in high school. Uh, I went to a uh, athletics camp at the school and uh, Glenis Nunn, who was an Olympic gold medalist in the heptathlon, she gave a talk 
And the only thing I remember from that talk is something that she said that her coach had told her, and it was, if you aim for the moon, even if you don't make it, you'll fall amongst the stars. Yeah. Now the Lending Library here has some great tools on helping you to set goals, it's a slide edge, and uh, Skip Ross has a CD series on the Dynamic Living series. Has anybody heard that? Yeah. Did anybody hear him say, write it down, write it down, write it down, write it down. <laughs> okay, so after each competition, the first thing we would do is I'd sit down with my coach Dan, and we would write down exactly what I was going to lift in three months' time at the next competition. Has anybody heard that a goal should be measurable and have a date? The goal of what I was going to lift was totally measurable. The date of the competition was set in concrete. So, if you have a goal that you want to work on, it might be a good idea to make it measurable, write it down, and have a date for it when you want it. Because the next thing we did was create our plan. We basically looked at what the goal was and wrote down a whole three month training program based on what that goal was going to be, breaking it down into weekly little increases. Now, what I love about a slight edge is that it focuses on doing daily action to edge you towards your goal. Now, for me, that was really key because if I thought, hmm, in 10 years I'm going to deadlift 255 kilos, I wouldn't have believed it. It was breaking it down into three month goals and then having a daily goal. Every day I'd go to the gym. This is my goal for the day. And that's what made it possible. And with the Health Made Easy plan, all I decided to do was do a little bit more every day. And at the start, I could do about 50 squats, 20 push-ups, 10 chin-ups, and 20 leg raises. And after three months of little increases, this morning I did 120 squats, 60 push-ups, 16 chin-ups, and 60 leg raises. Yeah, I was exhausted in 10 minutes. <laughs> Now, Skip Ross also says something in the series that um, we should read our goals every morning, every night, every morning, every night. Now, when I first heard that, I thought, well, what's reading my goals going to do? But then I realised that um, I kind of did something like that in powerlifting because my whole three-month training program, including the goals, was written on one A4 piece of paper. And every time I went to the gym, I was looking at that piece of paper and writing on it changing things. I was looking at it all the time, over and over again. So, I have at other times in my life written goals down, I've put them beside my bed and I've read them for two days and then forgotten about them. So it was, in palette it was kind of automatic. I didn't have to think about it. So now I've got a goal on my mirror, I've got a goal on my fridge and I've even got it on, the, um, on my phone on the, as the background image. So just do something that's like automatic so you don't have to think about it. Okay, who said that true learning is behaviour change? Now, of course when I started lifting, my coach had to show me how to do exercises. But I didn't go away for 10 years and study the world's best lifters and understand the perfect technique and then go, okay, I think I'm going to try and lift 225 kilos now. <laughs> now. That would be silly, right? But for some reason, in other areas of my life, I, um, I kind of had that approach. And um, it didn't work so well. So I've realised that all I really need to do is learn enough to get going and start doing something. And then you, know, you basically learn by refining and keep on doing it and keep on refining. And the last step is obviously to take action. You know, we've all heard it's what you do that matters. And it's doing those daily actions that gets us to where we want to go. And it didn't matter how good my plan was, what my goal was, if I didn't go to the gym and do the training, it just wasn't going to happen. So, you know, life is a journey. But sometimes we tend to look at the destination and think, one day, when I get there, you know, it's going to be great. But um, I want to leave you with this thought today. We can consider ourselves successful every single day just for doing those daily actions that 
get us moving and edging slightly in that direction of wherever it is you want to go. Thank you.